G'day, welcome to another Project Smith Tech build. Today we're working on something a little bit special. So today, this is the final conclusion for the server for Project Smith Tech. And what's special about this is we're using the W680 chipset. And the significance with this chipset, it'll actually let us use ECC unbuffered memory in conjunction with the i5-12500. So standard desktop part, still having the advantage of ECC memory, this will help while running a ZFS pool. And for the processor, yes, I am going for an aftermarket bracket. For the cooler, unfortunately, I forgot that the i5 actually comes with a cooler of itself. So I went all out and brought a Big Quiet Pro 4. So if I do decide to upgrade the CPU, I definitely have plenty to choose from. So from the 12th, 13th and 14th gen. For the hard drives, I am going solid state and everything else is, well, basically inconsequential. This will not be its forever home. So this is just basically, so I can do some basics tests, be satisfied with it. Then that will go into the final case, the think tank that I already have prepared. All right, let's unbox the motherboard. Now, a couple of drawbacks with the motherboard. So using the 680 chipset, along with unbuffered ECC memory, it is hideously expensive. And so a few things that I was disappointed about the motherboard, like for example, the two ethernet ports, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, which is not ideal. However, some of the pros to it, you do get your bifurcation. So you can run gen five, eight by eight with the two slots. And as you can see here, it looks like it's electrically wired for eight PCIe lanes, although I did only see it advertised, but although it was very rough, dating only four, but you did get four by four. So I assume that if you, populate electrically eight with the eight lanes it will just you won't be able to use this one that is the pro chipset and another feature i think is pretty helpful so you do have your four SATA ports now if you look here it gives you a slim sas port which according to the thing it only it's only good for sata so they did say sata somewhere in the manuals so but this is what i got here and note that this didn't actually come with the motherboard however having potentially eight ports here splitting with uh, two sata cards having full connection to the CPU, I can actually have a lot of hard drives hanging off this system. So let's get to the build. Very first thing I'm gonna do is install the CPU. However, I'm not using the traditional way. That's right. We're gonna go do it this way. Now to make things a little bit easier, I did put a bit of foam underneath and now I'm gonna start. Also keep in mind that the triangle is here. So when you take off the bracket, you're not actually gonna get a point of reference anymore. There we go, we've got a nice exposed CPU holder. Now for CPU, we've got to remember that the little triangle, well, it's going to fortunately match up here. So if you have a look, we've got the triangle there. You can see the triangle, very clear on the processor, not so clear, fortunately. I've got that all under control. So just checking, nice and smooth, nothing extraordinary. And so the bracket, we know that it's gonna be riding up, not unless your motherboard has a particular 90 degree turn. In that case, you do need to check and don't forget where your triangle is. Fortunately for this, nice and easy. So nothing difficult here. And with this, well, the screws that were holding it down, original bracket, we're just gonna do a crisscross pattern. Stuff very light first. And the main advantage here is, although I don't think the six core really needs it, but for if I decide to put the 12900KS in this system, the bracket will be ready. There we go, we're all starting to get there. So you don't want to supply a huge amount of torque, although with this particular bracket design that, it were, that I got from AliExpress, it does bottom out, so there's no special technique or no counting. So once you feel it a little bit firm, or when I say firm, you can put a bit of pressure I did put a tiny bit more pressure than what I thought was needed on my other system just to see if there was any RAM registry problems or any other problems and it was perfectly fine. But with this one, just crisscross until the bracket bottoms out and that's all you need. Mission accomplished. And same thing with the RAM. You want to populate your outer slots first. And the difference between the RAM unregistered DIMMs is it's all on die ECC rather than the processor. Man, that was a rough entry. Okay, so this is excellent. So now that we've got this done, let's go over some of the advantages with the chipset. Now, the difference between registered and unregistered ECC memory, the ECC or error correcting code is happening right on the RAM itself and not being registered with the CPU. So the CPU is still just a standard desktop CPU. So something within the Xeon, you would have a registry that would be controlling the ECC, but instead with unregistered, it's all happening on die. I'm not sure exactly what the chipset has to do with it, but allowing the 680 chipset does allow it to happen. So maybe 
if somebody's a little bit more knowledgeable, they'll be able to let me know in the comments. And with the, the connections, it gives you three M.2 ports, one going directly to the CPU. It's only a Gen 4, so this must be a slightly older board. So I think with the more slightly more modern chipsets, they do go up to Gen 5, so the CPU does allow the Gen 5. But essentially, it would be very nice, but for a server that's only going to be running Unraid anyway, well, at least for the time being. So I am going to do an Unraid and true nas if unraid doesn't do exactly what i want it to do which i know that true nas does so i'm quite familiar with true nas but this sort of operation using zfs in unraid not so much so anyway okay one last quick look at the system before it goes into the case cooler had no problems and there it is in all its glory now those who astute among you would notice that i didn't go to much effort to cable manage or let's be honest manage anything else but again this isn't it's forever home yeah, don't worry about that. She good. As long as the fans are free. Alrighty, let's see how she runs. Okay, so I started at the computer and my goodness, it did take a long time. So if you're going to do unregistered ECC memory DDR5, it's going to take a long time. Don't worry, you haven't messed anything up. Probably, I don't know. This is me. As you can see, everything's already in. I am about to update the BIOS. You can have a look and the last time it's been updated was... In 2022, so oof. And you can look at the date now. It's. I do want to take one thing, so... As I was going through the Slim SAS, so that's the connector that you saw me put all the hard drives. It was set to PCIe. Now, with the literature that I could find, I did not see any option. So I thought it was only SATA. So the fact that we've got a PCIe is actually potentially quite helpful going forward in the future. But for now, I'm leaving it as SATA. And the LAN 2.5, ugh, what a waste. I won't be using it and nothing more to add. And now we're doing the BIOS. Now I probably should have this connected to my uninterrupted power supply battery pack since I've already got it, but let's hope that the power doesn't go out. Hope is the best strategy. From what I can tell, the most benefit that I get from this is extra memory support for DDR5. Also, I can put the 13th gen and potentially 14th gen. I didn't check that, but I'm considering that they may have updated that, but this will eventually get the 12900KS, which is currently my video editor. I found that the 13900KS is actually quite cheap, so. Okay, so there's a big change there. Let's have a look at what the system's actually doing right now. And conclusion, I'm currently doing a memory stress test. This is gonna take a long time. And these are my temperatures. So it is starting to warm up a little bit, but 40 degrees. And keep in mind that none of these dims have any heat spreaders on them. So that might be something I'll change. Although at 40 degrees, meh. But in conclusion, so once I'm happy with all the testing, I'll be taking out the Intel graphics card and I'll be adding the SATA cards in there. So they'll give it an additional 16 ports plus the eight that the motherboard can supply. 24 hard drives all up this system can take. And I could even go more if I really wanted to use, but I, I need the, the chipset PCIe lanes for the 10 gig network card. So in conclusion, if you like this sort of content, subscribe. Project Smith Tech signing out. Peace. And now for the gag wheel. Now, some of you are probably wondering why for somebody who owns dual processors and basically every X99 motherboard out there, why I've decided to I'll go for a single desktop CPU. And this is the reason why. So in short, basically due to various events, electricity is going to keep rising and rising and rising. And our current power draw is about 105 watts. I'm hoping to get that down to less than 40 watts. So it will be very interesting what my total server draw will be once this is all done. Now with Unraid, I have gotten a system to 25 watts of idle power. And again, if the process of the server is actually doing any work, then obviously I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm hoping to have idle power draw 50 watts. Peace.